Turning a live business event into a virtual one is one thing, but what about turning a tactical in-person familiarization trip for meeting planners into a virtual showcase? Talk about a tough crowd, but that's exactly what Quebec City Business Destination did, and they hosted a virtual education tour in early June 2020 for over 80 meeting planners from around the world. So how did it go? Well, I recently sat down with the team from Quebec City to talk about best practices and a few learnings that they are putting in their back pocket for the next time they host a virtual fam. It's all part of our 2020 series where we're looking at meeting planners and partners that are defying the status quo and reimagining how events can look like in this new economy. Ensure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and then you'll be notified of all the stories as they come out. And now let's hear from Quebec City. It's Leanne Calderwood. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am thrilled by today's guests. Uh, about several weeks ago, you probably received an email if you were a meeting planner about a virtual fam coming out of Quebec City, which was the first that I had seen in the industry. And I was just wowed that a destination would take on this daunting task of creating a tactical experience in the virtual environment. So I've reached out to the team at Quebec City Business Destination and the Quebec City Convention Center to talk about how they put this together and any success stories that they can pass on to their fellow colleagues in the meetings industry. I'm welcoming today Emily, Pat, and Renee Frederic, and we're going to get started talking about the Quebec City Virtual Education Tour. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Leanne. Hi, Hi Leanne. Great to see you again. It's great to see you guys, even though we're doing it in a virtual setting. And yeah, I haven't seen many of you since, I guess, January. Uh, mm -hmm. So when the hammer came down in March and kind of disrupted, I guess, your plans to host your summer familiarization trip, what prompted you to, to kind of pivot and create something new for your planners? Well, I guess I'll, I'll step in. I, I think the big the main thing is that we wanted to maintain our visibility in the different markets and keep the relationships that we have uh, with our clients. Um, we didn't want to do something that had already been done by any other destination. We wanted to try and do something that was really, really innovative. And that's where the idea of doing a three-day fam trip uh, came up. And I know you were on one of our fams a few years ago, so really what we replicated was that kind of experience but using you know obviously digital technology and, and that kind of thing so so really for us we saw it as a professional challenge uh, to really pivot our strategy almost 180 degrees and uh, and to be honest to keep ourselves busy you know uh, yeah. the stress of the initial covid was setting in and we were kind of wondering well what do we do next where do we go yeah. Well, you raised an interesting word. You said the word challenge a couple times. And I'm going to assume as you were leading up to the educational tour that you did encounter some challenges. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Well, it was a first for everyone, <laughs> first of all. And also uh, turning to pivoting to virtual is a, is a new challenge. First, we were all working from home. So we had to organize this all uh, in our own homes and uh, nobody has ever done this before so it was a it was really new to us um mm -hmm. we didn't have any uh, ex like pat uh, pat and regis were a host they are experienced to host real virtual fan tours uh, real tours i mean and um but not virtual ones so that was really uh, the, the main challenge and to align everything. And also we, um, we decided to do this really quickly. I think we had the, the span of a month to organize everything. So we really uh, had to, <laughs> to do this uh, quickly mm -hmm. uh, with everything we had in hand. Almost uh, we created some new content and uh, it, it was almost like a micro site that we had to build in, in one month. So, uh, it was the main challenge. 
Yeah, it was uh, just to jump in on what uh, Renee is saying. It was challenging. It was fun. It was quite a, a, a great experience for our team, uh, almost like a team building experience. We were all working re remotely from home and then we had this big project uh, to put together in a very short period of time, a, a new project. Nobody had, has ever done it. Um, but we have fun doing it and we were able, I think, to put together something that that was engaging and interesting for, uh, for planners. So as a planner myself, I did jump on the micro site. Now I wasn't uh, an attendee of the actual fam, but I did jump on the micro site and there was a lot going on. It was very clear. I, sh I should preface it by saying that it was very clear to understand but you had a lot of different components that had to come together for this day. What can you tell me about the technology and the AV that you had to put together to make this work? Well, I will jump in because we, um, we, 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 did, we did a complete overall of our website uh, and this, the new website was up uh, at the beginning of April, I think. So the timing was great because on our old website, I think it, the, 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 uh, the user experience would have been quite different. Uh, so we were lucky to have this brand new website with new um, with uh, the new interface and everything. Um, regarding technology, uh, we had to get used to our new website. Uh, we did all the pages and we integrated everything almost in house. Almost all of it was integrated in house. Okay. Um, the uh, virtual visits uh, of the hotel and the city uh, were prepared by a local photographer that we're uh, we've been working with for a few years uh, so he was uh, very uh, helpful putting together everything quickly uh, we had uh, help from a uh, website uh, our um, sorry for the noise <laughs> okay. we had help from the from our uh, web firm to integrate the the pictures but other than that we all we did everything almost in house and it was uh, it was a challenge but it was fun to get used to our new environment so wow. uh, I may add, uh, we also had uh, our, we worked with our partner Encore okay. for, uh, for two of the webinars out of uh, three. So that was helpful. Uh, we didn't have to do anything. They handled all that, that uh, part. Oh, perfect. Well, you know, and that's a resounding theme I'm sensing from all the various interviews I've done uh, this season is the partnerships with people like Encore who are providing their talents and their skills. These are the skills and talents they've always had. And um, what this time has really shown is, is their skill and talent. And it's given them a, a great platform to, to kind of showcase what it is that they can do. Uh, so I'm glad that you had a, a strategic partner like that as well, because it, it probably lent itself to the success of your event, being able to, to collaborate with, with smart people like those people over at Encore. Well, it, it helped a lot to have more people uh, in this project uh, that knew a lot more than we did. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. so uh, talking about successes, now it's over and I believe it's almost a month since uh, you launched the tour. What can you tell me about the success of the projects and any learnings that you pulled from the project? Well, I'll, I'll step in here. Uh, one of the, I think the first thing that comes to mind to me is the amazing industry response that we had. We had over 80 participants over three days when conventional wisdom, conventional wisdom tells us that if you run anything for more than half an hour, you lose your people. So we were really out at the end of the diving board on that. Uh, but we also had uh, just great mix in between the US market, the Canadian market, uh, association client, corporate clients, and so on. So we really uh, got a chance to welcome people to this tour that we might not have uh, been able to have before because people were, even though they were reluctant to take three days and go on a fam tour, a lot of people committed to doing three days on a virtual tour, and they were different clients than we might normally talk to. So that was a, that was a huge, huge one. Um, you know, we, we were really lucky as, as, as far as that goes. Um, we discovered very quickly that the format that we designed, and we were lucky in, in, in that, is that uh, people really liked the fact that they could master their own schedule. So they start out the day, you know, getting just an email from us with a, just a little quirky video detailing the rest of the day. 
that really allowed them to, to take the time to look at the venues and look at the hotels, look at the different things that they wanted to see, but on their own time. And they could pick and choose what they wanted to see. Uh, and then they knew that at the end of every day, we had about a 30 minute live session with, you know, our partners and, and, and everything else. So that was, that was really, really good. Um, Emily, maybe you can talk a little bit about the response after the event from the social media that I master so well. Yeah. <laughs> that is our Twitter king. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, well, we did. We built the the fams um, so we it could live online after the three day event. Uh, we wanted to put together a tool that we could send out to clients or the industry after the fact. Um, so we did a social media post. We sponsored uh, we sponsored posts on Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, we did email blasts from our own list, and I think uh, Rene uh, could confirm that we did e blasts uh, uh, within the industry, two e blasts. Um, and we had a fantastic response from some media. We did some interviews, as we're doing here, because people <laughs> wanted to hear the good news of what we've put together. Um, so yeah, uh, it was a lot of uh, it was a, a lot of work, but it seems to interest people. So the the feedback was great. Well, and that's exactly why I reached out to you guys, because it's, it's, it's such a great success story. And even if there were some things that didn't go right, it's such a great story to share. So I am not surprised that people are reaching out to learn more about this. And I'm hopeful through this, they can also um, grab some tips and, and tricks for if they decide to do it on their own. Um, so I've been feverishly taking notes because I think um, this is all good stuff. This is all things that destinations can take into their own experiences as they create um, their own educational tours uh, in the months to come. Um, so you mentioned the feedback from the delegates. Was, was, what was the feedback mechanism like? How did you obtain their thoughts and feelings about the program? And what was the overall feedback? We, um, we sent out a survey uh, like we do after every FAM trip, uh, but this time it was after the virtual one uh, with all our questions. And we even asked, um, because it was a first for us, we even asked, do you like the 3 day format? Would you have preferred to, to receive just one uh, communication or just a full day? And majority of people said that the, the three-day format was uh, was perfect for them because it could blend work with uh, with this uh, with with the tours. So uh, we asked it, like a lot of questions if they were considering uh, coming to Big City when it's going to be safe to do so, uh, if they were going to send out a lead at some point. And I think um, this wasn't what we expected at all. We just wanted to keep the relationship, as we said, but it, we got a few leads after that. So that was kind of the, the major success to me. I wasn't expecting, like I was expecting zero uh, leads after that. I, would, I just wanted to uh, bring awareness about Quebec City. And I think it's mission accomplished. Well, and I was going to ask if you thought it was a worthwhile investment, but I'm hearing it probably was, hey? Yes, yes it was. Yeah. yeah. As Emily said, we, uh, even though um, we didn't get any leads or anything, uh, what, the content we created is still online and we, we're still going to benefit from uh, that, that evergreen content. And one thing that maybe that we had underestimated though also as well is that you know, compared to a real fam where you might have, uh, you know, 15 to 25 clients and the, the, uh, the attention would be relatively limited to those clients, the virtual fam is just like them throwing a rock onto a pond, you know, it has just created ripple and ripple and ripple effects of people that have been saying, you know what, like, this is amazing. Uh, you know, some people were surprised we had the guts to do it. Some people thought we were crazy, but everybody's commented it. And, uh, you know, it's just it's like, it just, it's, it's taken on a life of its own up until last week. I was still like, getting comments from people in the different, uh, you know, different sessions that we have in this sessions about, about the education tour and what the, you know, how we put it into place. So it's amazing how much, uh, interest and goodwill is generated for Quebec city. It's been phenomenal. Oh. So now looking ahead at this great success and, and all the contacts you've made, do you think you'll try it again? 
Yes, well, I, I do. <laughs> I hope we'll try it again. I hope it will become part of our uh, marketing strategies and a way to reach out to clients who otherwise couldn't, wouldn't be able to get to Quebec. So, yes, I, I hope this, this is a, a, a new tool for us to use uh, in combination with face-to-face -face, uh, fan tools, yes. Is there anything that you would do differently for the next one? <laughs> Yes. Uh, <laughs> There's a long list that we have that uh, that uh, not we, that long. <laughs> we do we do uh, we do a post mortem on all of our activities, like every every DMO does, and we've had all kinds of uh, uh, virtual conversations about you know what went well, what what would need to be improved. Uh, on the last day, we had a, a cocktail with all of our guests and and. Uh, you know, ask flat out what you would change, what you liked, what you didn't like, and so on. So we got very honest feedback. You know how it is when someone has a glass of wine in their hand, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> even virtually, the feedback is very, is very, very good. Um, because we were sort of leading edge on that, we're going to keep those close to the vest for us so that we, we hope not to make the same mistakes and we hope, hope to take the feedback we have to improve them. And I think the big challenge is going to be how do we keep it fresh? Mm -hmm. Don't cut and paste in three months as an example or, or you know uh, we can do seasonal versions perhaps but really that freshness that we had this time around is something that is it's got amazing value so I think being first we're lucky to to, uh, to have done it first um, because you know there's only one city that can be first and we happen to be first so mm -hmm. uh, I think the next one as well people will have higher expectations that will have They'll have seen a couple of different attempts and so on. So that's the challenge: is doing something that's refreshing, that's that's informative, that's useful for planners, uh, and it's fresh. You know. Yeah. And we're happy to share the knowledge to to, to the other destinations. We already have a couple of one reach, reaching out to us, and we were really honest in in what we would change. And a lot of it is because we also organize it in in one month. So there are things that, of course, we uh, we wish we could have done differently, but we it was also not very possible. And if the next destinations do better than us, then we're going to be really happy for them uh, too. But yeah, we we had to uh, to produce something that uh, was worthwhile in that time frame, and we we're happy to mm -hmm. be kind of the first ones uh, because then nobody had really expectations. We could really do anything we wanted. Great, great point. Well, you mentioned a few words that, that always resonate with me. Um, Pat, you, you said that people thought you were crazy, and I think being first doesn't make you crazy. Being first makes you lucky, and you did say that as well. Um, so yes, your team is very lucky to have gone through this experiment, and to your point, now you're able to share it with others um, through a variety of, of platforms. So congratulations on a, a fantastic event. Um, my final parting question for you guys, um, and this has kind of been a recurring theme with a lot of my posts lately, is there are some meeting professionals and partner professionals like us out there who are still struggling to kind of find the silver lining in all of this. Do you have any advice for people who still need that little push to, to get out there and try something new like this? If it's, um, yeah, uh, um, we mentioned it at the beginning of the, uh, uh, at the beginning, I think the, if it's only to get, to get connected with your team or the industry, uh, doing a virtual event is a, uh, is a great way to connect. Mm -hmm. uh, as we mentioned, it's it was like a team building for us, so it was uh, it was great for that. Yeah, to reconnect. And it, was also, <laughs> it was just a reason to kind of do something together and see each other. We were um, during the live cocktails, we were all two meters away, but we were still together, and it was a fun experience. And Pat did mention to us uh, that when we came up with this idea to the sales team, they were kind of, Oof, <laughs> how are we going to do this? And now, I, you know, this morning I told him, uh, now we can do anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and that's the thing. You, the collective minds around the table, you guys can do anything. I love it. I love it. But I think also, Leanne, it's important that, that I think people, one of the, the big hesitations we have was, was it too soon? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. was it too soon to talk about business? Was it too soon to, 
to go back into what is still essentially a promotional uh, endeavor. And uh, even in, in, you know, mid May to late May, I already had a lot of planners saying, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to having some good news. I'm looking forward to talking about business. Uh, and I think uh, we were lucky because we could have had a negative reaction from people. It was, it was the opposite. We knew very, very quickly that a lot of people were very, very interested. So that kind of gave us sort of a, a little clue that, uh, you know what, people are, 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 are concerned about our welfare and we're concerned. We want to make sure everybody's okay. But conversely, people want to get back to work. Mm -hmm. So well, I think that, uh, you know, so somebody who's hesitating, who's saying, well, you know, is the industry ready for it? Uh, you know, do I have anything new to bring? Do I have anything new to say? The situation has evolved so quickly. They shouldn't hesitate. And there's lots of good resources out there within, uh, you know, don't, don't stay stuck in your basement. There's lots of good people out there that can help you do it. So. Oh, thank you, Pat. I, I love that advice. Um, I'm, I'm definitely going to highlight that um, in the notes for everyone that will accommodate uh, or sorry, accompany this video. Um, and you're right. The numbers speak for your for themselves. You had 80 planners who were keen to give three days of your time of their time to to participate in the tour. So, and it's only going to get bigger. I think the next one you do, you'll see um, even a bigger return on all of your time and your talent putting it together. I can't thank you enough for your time today. For sharing um, this is what I love about. Our industry and our industry in Canada is we're all willing to share our knowledge and our best practices to make other people better and and you three are a great testament to that well I can see a lot more invitations flying your way in the months and maybe even the years ahead um, I appreciate your time thank you so much and I do wish you guys an incredible summer thanks for joining me thanks Leanne take care Bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. <laughs>